As Moscow escalates its drone assault to new extremes, Ukraine faces unrelenting bombardment with civilians caught between fear and fatigue. Our next story explains how, with a possible shift in U.S. leadership, Kiev's support from Washington stands on unsteady ground. Drones swarm Ukrainian skies. Air raid sirens scream into the night. Ukraine faces one of the most intense bombardments yet from Russia. Russia unleashed its most ferocious attack yet, sending a staggering 145 drones into Ukrainian skies in a single night. Air alerts blared as explosions ripped through cities, leaving residents of Kharkiv, Zaporizhia and Odessa scrambling for shelter. For residents of Kyiv, the last two months have been marked by sleepless nights, with some seeking shelter inside metro stations. Besides drones and missiles, Russian glide bombs are breaching Ukrainian air defences, causing death and destruction. Russia has also unleashed a new deadlier version of the glide bombs. The rocket-boosted Grom E-1 flies as far as 120 kilometers, carrying about 600 kilograms of explosives. The scale of attacks has left Ukrainians questioning just how much more they can endure. How was it? It was scary. I heard the sound of the drone, then the sound faded, and then it hit this house. I was thrown to the ground with a blast wave. It was all in a mere second. For the fourth night in a row, the enemy targets our city. There were several Shahid drones. You all know and see what's going on today. Luckily, there are no victims, but there are injured people. There are many damaged residences and apartments. Private houses were destroyed. People have to be on the streets now. The massive Russian drone attack came after Kyiv unleashed 34 drones towards Moscow, the largest attempted strike on the Russian capital since the war began. Russian ground forces are also pressing forward, claiming fresh territory in Donetsk while striking crucial Ukrainian facilities, from electronic warfare centers to drone factories. Despite Ukraine's defense efforts, its military units are growing increasingly stretched along the extensive front lines. The looming prospect of a Trump return to the White House has cast a shadow of a Kyiv support from Washington, which has been vital for its survival. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warns that any easing of U.S. resolve against Russia could embolden Moscow, leading to heightened aggression and threatening Ukraine's position in the war. Bureau Report, Beyond World is One. The chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Estonian Parliament, Marco Mikkelsen, is now joining us live from Georgia. Mr. Mikkelsen, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome to the program. Before I ask you about the war, I want to know from you, because we've not discussed how Europe feels about uh, President-elect Trump's victory. How do you feel about his victory? Are you hopeful or are you um, skeptical? Uh, first and foremost, uh, this was expected that uh, the United States uh, and people of the United States will vote for Trump and uh, he can uh, do the comeback. Uh, what is felt in Europe, and uh, this is shared among uh, political elites, uh, I, I, I'm more than sure that people understand that at the time and European countries uh, were able to perhaps, uh, uh, you know, be, be behind the U.S. backs and uh, in terms of security and defense expenditures, then uh, these, these times are over and uh, certainly European uh, nations, countries have to put more money, more uh, energy into defense uh, capabilities and capacities. That is uh, 
clear. Mr. Chairman, is there hope for Ukraine now that uh, Donald Trump will be coming to office next year? Because we had a conversation or we had uh, reports that um, President Volodymyr Zelensky did have a conversation with Donald Trump. He said that that conversation was excellent. But the Kremlin is staying wary about talking to Trump. I think that uh, what we have uh, these days and the upcoming weeks, uh, at, at least till the end of January, is that the dynamics on a, on a battle uh, battleground in, in Ukraine is going to be very uh, volatile. Uh, as we see, and you, from your reports as well, that Russia is intensifying uh, their war efforts, uh, both on ground and in, in the skies, and uh, those missile attacks, both uh, by drones or missiles, against Ukrainian cities, they are constantly going on right now for weeks or even months. Mm -hmm. And uh, while Ukraine is getting closer to the tough winter time, uh, I am more than sure that Russia will intensify uh, their efforts to uh, demolish uh, critical infrastructure and to, 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 to really uh, terrorize uh, Ukrainian society. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yesterday we had, uh, or the day before yesterday, we had uh, Ukraine, you know, launching drones towards Russia. And it is reported that uh, over 140 drones were launched towards Russia. But Russia has downplayed that, saying that uh, it will not have any impact on the war. What do you think the message was by Ukraine? The message was clear that uh, uh, Ukraine has already capabilities uh, built by their own uh, capacities of uh, missiles and uh, and uh, drones specifically, which can uh, be in their uh, numbers, quantities, and qualities uh, uh, dangerous for uh, for Russia and. Uh, and uh, these attacks, which are not only, of course, being uh, targeted uh, the, the frontline areas, but uh, you know, strategic um, uh, assets, uh, hundreds kil of kilometers from uh, Ukraine, show that uh, Ukraine has uh, autonomous, let's say, uh, uh, readiness and cap cap uh, capabilities to. Uh, to engage uh, certain Russian uh, uh, strategic uh, sites uh, in distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, most likely these uh, numbers are going up. All right, Mr. Chairman, finally and very quickly, uh, how do you foresee the next two months before Trump gets into office will look like? Um, we will see uh, heavy battles on uh, front lines in different directions, Gursk region in, uh, in Donetsk area, uh, but also uh, most likely, as I said, Russia will uh, launch uh, uh, continuous uh, air uh, attacks against uh, Ukrainian cities. Uh, and uh, that is something where obviously uh, they try to position themselves in a better uh, situation, then Trump comes into office finally at the end of January. All right. I've been talking to Mr. Marco Mikkelsen, is the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Estonian Parliament. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for your time and for talking to us today. Thank you.